Ooh, it's time for evolution. We welcome to the Ron Ashram. So today I'm gonna to give you guys two sneaky tips to two sneaky ways of practicing your anatomy. And when I say sneaky, I mean uh, practicing your anatomy whenever you're doing something that's not practical. For example, like uh, doing a whole bunch of gesture sketches or you know anatomy studies or something like that with on paper. I'm talking about actually uh, putting, you know, putting your creative ideas in. Like, so if, if you're making a character design or a, or drawing a comic, you you have this way of, of practicing, uh, yeah, of practicing your uh, anatomy. And so one way of practicing your your anatomy in a sneaky way is have a muscular character. And so my one of my muscular characters is. Jordy and I have another muscular character and also if they're muscular just due to you know their personality their past there's a certain reason why they're muscular so how the main the main idea to get out of this is have a muscular character and when you have this muscular character you have this um, excuse to uh, practice your anatomy in all different angles especially if it's a, a reoccurring character in your in your comic you have this uh, this way of constantly practicing your anatomy when you have a strong character you know and if they're if they're more uh, prevalent they're they're more uh, they have more screen time then that's a, that's a great way of having your anatomy practice you know and so for the next example is the Z, Z and the Zetabots, and so for the Zetabots, the they give me an excuse, sort of say, to consistently practice my my fundamentals and my proportions, just due to the sheer amount of how much you know Zetabots are within the story when it comes to this character. And so when it comes to my when it comes to designing these characters, uh, for, firstly, uh, imagine having. Of having your fundamentals be the actual design of the of whatever you're creating and so for example your basic shapes such as the cylinder the square the oval etc can be implemented into certain aspects for example if you're creating some kind of cyborg or you know a bot like this and so generally when I'm drawing a when I'm drawing you know characters like this with anatomy whether it's a human or so uh, I like to start off with a the a box or a, a rectangular as for the pelvis and in a in an oval for the torso for the torso and some spheres for the for the shoulders you know and as you can see, these are all all of, all of this here, all of the uh, all the basic shapes here. And so, this basic shape is what I use to build this and all of my other characters. And so, with this with this basic shape that's being reinforced throughout the entire design, it helps me to consistently practice my the basic shape, my basic shape place, placement, you know, and also. When it comes to make doing your proportions, uh, and so for cranial for cranial units, if you're if you guys are familiar with cranial units, you'll know that this this portion of the leg here is where the uh, you know the, the vastus uh, yeah the, the vastus laterals or the vastus medius you know are located. When it comes to the humans, when it comes to the human, this top portion of the leg, pretty much the quads. Uh, it's usually like divided when it comes to cranial units is divided into three different uh, cranial units and so since it's divided into three different cranial, cranial units for the humans i've decided to just divide this into three different units and have visible lines to show to show that as opposed to if you were actually drawing a human you won't have these visible lines to reinforce what you what you've learned you know when you have when you implement it into the, these designs, you can finally, uh, you can just put it into practice, you know? You can even abstract it if you want. 
and so when it comes to this this top portion of the arm there's it's usually for the top portion of the arm it's usually two cranial units and the forearm is usually uh, two cranial units including the palm however i've implemented I, i've in, i've implemented a few more cranial units for this so you can see how elongated this arm is you know you can see how this this hand here or this uh this grapple here reaches the the knee of the robot you know and also when you're making these kinds of abstractions just be aware of what you're abstracting and when you're aware of what you're abstracting you know it can also help to improve your proportions you know and also when you're when you're doing your abstraction your when you're doing your abstractions or create or creations you also want to make it make sense so for example where is this uh wire coming from uh since it does have a big head made perhaps though so this wire here is coming from its big head that's why it's able to stretch this long you know so you also want to have it you, you also want to have what you're doing make sense you know and maybe there's a limit to how much the head could stretch you know and so yeah uh that'll be the video thank you guys for watching these are some uh some small tips that you can use for your for your endeavors and yeah peace